Welcome CSC 121 class. I'm here to talk to you about something very serious. Errors. Little roller up along first. Behind the bag. Now, if you're in your How to Think Like a Computer Scientist book, there's a little section called Debugging, and it goes over the different kinds of errors. Now, the first part in 1.6, it talks about debugging, and I'll just go over these with you, and it's tracking down programming errors and correcting them. Let's see if I'm right, and I'm right. Now, this should be fun. You should actually like tracking down errors. You shouldn't feel like, oh my god, I made an error or you make mistakes. They're not really mistakes. There's always going to be errors. There's always going to be bugs. There's always going to be problems to fix. That's what problem solving is. So you should look forward to this kind of stuff. If there's an error in a program, you should look forward to it. You should be like a detective trying to track things down. So that's not a bad thing. And I think it makes you better. I, I think you just get better. The more you problem solve, the more you troubleshoot, I think the better you'll be. So that's a good thing. So this is just a part of it. And that's why they they have all this stuff in here, and you're going to read a lot about errors. So they're going to happen all the time. Syntax errors, they're going to be the errors you make. So you're going to make errors with the language itself, and it's going to tell you. Sometimes the IDE will tell you, and sometimes the interpreter will tell you once it tries to run the code. So it goes through these things here about syntax errors. I'm not going to read it for you, but it says here in the little quiz, which of the following is a syntax error? Attempting to divide by zero, which logically you can't do, so that's not it. Forgetting a colon at the end of a statement where one is required. Well, yeah, I guess we use a colon with uh, conditional statements and things like that. So that would be one. Forgetting to divide by 100 when printing a percentage. No, that's something that you're, you're figuring out. That would be more of a semantic thing, something that you're doing, but the computer might not know that. But So it would be this one, forgetting a colon, something with the language. So syntax is a problem with the language. You screwed up the language somehow. You didn't follow the rules with the syntax. It's like not putting a period at the end of a sentence when you're supposed to in English. So if we check that, that's correct. Let's see down here. Who or what finds the syntax errors? It says the compiler or the interpreter, meaning when you when you print it out, it'll find it. Sometimes your IDE will indicate that even before you do it. You'll see a little X or something. It'll warn you ahead of time for syntax errors. So that should be right there. So syntax is the one, these are the errors you're going to make a lot. You're going to just mess up things, and you'll just get used to the language more and more from doing that. Let's try to do a syntax error just to try it out and see what happens. I have the same file we worked on for string output, and let's just try something. Let's say up here with name, you're like, oh, I'm, you're thinking JavaScript, and you're thinking to type in var or something before you do it. So you go here and you type var name equals rich. You were thinking JavaScript. You weren't thinking Python. So if you did that and you saved it, now right away the IDE is going to pick up on that as a syntax error. I could hover over it. So it even tells you before it, before the interpreter even tries to do anything with it, you're going to get that there. So you're, you're going to have a problem even running it. But you could still run it and just see what it says. And you'll get this feedback and it says syntax error, invalid syntax, and it'll show you where it's at. Now it's pointing to name. And you might think, well, why is it name? It's because, it's not because you put var and you were thinking JavaScript. It's actually because it put a space in there. Because it's looking at this thing like a variable name, and you can't have a space in a variable name. So that's the invalid syntax with that. Other syntax errors, even, let's say I forgot to finish my quote here for a string. And I did that. And I did save. And I'll probably get the same thing again. Syntax error. I'll run it. I'll see what it says. And it says EOL while scanning string literal. So it's identifying that whatever we're trying to do with the string here, we didn't finish off. So it is pointing out here that we didn't put a quote there at the end. So it's even, not only is it syntax, but it's giving us a little more detail here about the string literal that we're working in here. Because the literal is the value that we're talking about here. So we just need to put the quote in there. So that, that's syntax kind of stuff. Any of this kind of stuff here, if we go here, if we forget a parentheses in here, we do something like that. We save it. Just one thing to point out. I forgot a parentheses up here, and it's showing the syntax error down here. Keep in mind when you're debugging, when you're looking for errors, that sometimes it doesn't know when you're finishing off the parentheses. So it's looking to the next line to see if you're going to finish it. That's why sometimes the error may indicate on the line after you did something wrong. So if, you, if you're looking at this line saying, well, what did I do on line 9? And there's nothing wrong. Always look back before that because there could be something that didn't finish off before that. So if I run this, I'm getting invalid syntax and it's pointing to print. It's pointing to this print 
And that could be confusing, but if you look back, it's not going to tell you that you didn't do the parentheses here. It just doesn't know when you were going to end that parentheses. It could be looking for it here or somewhere else. So that's why sometimes with errors on a certain line, you have to go to the previous line to see if it didn't finish off. Sometimes we deal with that with CSS. If you don't put a semicolon, it's you're not going to get an error in CSS until the next line that comes up. So I'll fix that syntax error. So that's syntax errors. That's just stuff with the language that you are messing up and I'll mess up and everybody will mess up. We'll do that all the time because we're not used to typing like this. You know, we we type in English and write papers and things like that and emails and texts and stuff like that. So we're not used to always following these rules, but we have to follow these rules because the computer doesn't understand it unless we follow these rules. All right, so let me fix that and let me save it and let me go back. And so that's syntax error, so that makes sense. And let's move on here. The other kind of error we're going to see is runtime errors. And sometimes you'll see these exceptions, and they say because something exceptional bad has happened. That's at least what they say in here. But also there's built-in exceptions that are part of the Python language that you'll see. So there's all kinds of errors that the language has built in that you'll see. You'll see type errors and division errors and all kinds of things that pop up. So the interpreter will find that actually once you run it. If you notice this, the interpreter will find them once you start running the program or once you start executing your Python file. If you've noticed the ones we did before, it didn't really do anything. Nothing really happened because there was errors in it. Uh, like just for example, let me go back here and let me put an error down here. And if we go to run it, Notice nothing's happening. It won't do anything. It goes through here and it's not going to do anything. It won't execute it because there's there's something wrong with the syntax in here. So it's not something it's catching as it's running through it. Even right from the source file, it's catching something. So it's throwing an error right away. It won't even do anything. So this won't let us do anything when you have a syntax error. It won't even run any of the file. It's not like it's going to go through a couple lines and print things out because notice it didn't print anything out. When it interprets the file, it's not going to do anything yet when you have syntax. It's like it won't let you start. It's kind of like you're offsides in football or something. You got to you can't run the play or anything like that. It's not like there's a penalty in the middle of a play. It's kind of like an offsides if you think of it in football terms. So, so anyway, let me put this back here. And we'll go back and see what it says about runtime errors, also exceptions. And these are things that will happen kind of throughout the program. Which of the following is a runtime error? Divide by zero. And you can't divide by zero. So that's something when it gets to that part of the program and you divide by zero, that's where it's actually going to throw an error. Forgetting a colon, that's syntax. It won't do anything if you have a syntax error. And forgetting to divide by 100 when printing a percentage amount, that's kind of a logic thing. That's a semantic thing. So. That's something that, that's your issue that you have to deal with that it won't even find. It won't even find that error. You're going to find the error and you're going to have to fix that. So it's going to be this one here. So if we check this and it said Python can't reliably tell that you're trying to divide by zero until it executes the program. And it says who or what typically finds runtime errors? The interpreter will find it as it runs through the program. So it'll run the program until it gets to parts where it finds that particular error. Then you'll get that error show up. So let's try that out. Let's try a runtime error. And I think we already had one. We had like a type error one time. And that was the one I think down here. I'm going to get rid of this. When I did the first assignment, when I recorded this video, we got an error because of age down here being the wrong type because it's part of concatenation. Oh, here it is down here. For some, I couldn't move that thing. It wasn't scrolling down. So here's my concat down here. And we got an error here with this, but I fixed it by doing the reassignment here. So let me just comment this out. I'll put a comment here, comment that out. So this whole thing's like a comment. And we're gonna throw an error here and let's see what it does. I'll drag this up again. I'm not sure why it wouldn't let me scroll below that thing. But anyway, that was odd. So I'll save this and I'll run it. And here, it ran, hi, my name is Rich, I'm 52 years old, three times. So it it ran three of the print statements, but then when it got to the one that had the error, and I'm not sure why this isn't scrolling correctly down here, when it got to this one, that's when the error came. So the interpreter picked that up when it got here. So it went through, that's why they call it runtime, because it's running, and then it's kind of like, you know, like I said, a penalty in the middle of a play where a flag gets thrown. The flag got thrown here because we have a type error. So that's like a penalty that, that happened. So we'd have to fix that. And it, it gives us a little feedback here of what's going on. Type error can only concatenate string, not int. 
And remember, age was an int, and we're concatenating it in here with a string. So they had a problem with it. So we have to make it a string. So you could basically string all these words together is kind of what's happening. So that that's a runtime error. They also mentioned something about division by zero. And I'll do this at the end. I'll just say print. I'll just print out something. And I'll say age, which is 52, and it's an integer, divided by zero. And I'll just print it out and see what happens at the end. So that should happen at the end. And actually, I should fix this here so I don't get the error here. Remember, we have to convert this to a string. So we could do a string conversion and just do str and then put parentheses around age. So it's doing that in the middle of that expression that's happening here. So let's save this and let's run it. Bring this up again. I'm not sure why I'm having a scrolling issue here. And there it goes. Zero division error, division by zero. So that's that's a runtime error. And it actually did everything else. It actually printed out all these things until it got to that. Now let me move this up here so you can see what's going on. And let me save it and just run it again because it's annoying looking at this stuff down here. So it's actually running all my code until it got to the one down there. I'm still having a scroll issue here. I'm not sure why that's happening. I'll have to look at that after after the video. Unfortunately, I'm filming a video right now, but zero division error. So that's an exception that happens with Python because we can't do that. If I went back zero divided by age, that'll actually make a float when I do that. So I'll save that. I'm dividing with zero, but I'm not dividing by zero. So let me save that. Let me run it. And it actually gives me 0, 0.0. So that's a runtime error. So any of those things like type error, division error, you'll see all kinds of different errors. I think we had one time where we used an out of range thing here. If I used one and two, if I put one and two here and it's out of range, I think I did that the first time, putting index numbers here and index out of range. So if I save this and run it, there I'm getting an index error because the index number is out of a range. So tuple index out of range. So that index is out of range. So that's another runtime error. And notice it did run the first one, but then when it got to the next one, it didn't. So runtime's kind of happening during the execution of the source file. So the interpreter is picking that up. A syntax error will actually get stopped right at the beginning. It's like, whoa, you can't do anything. It's like jumping off sides. You can't do anything. Nothing will be legal if you jump off sides. But here it'll go through some things and then it'll find it. So that's that's runtime error that you'll see here. And the last one that it'll mention, and this is semantic error, meaning there's a meaning in it. And you meant one thing and something else happened. And this is stuff you'll, you'll kind of gradually see as you work more. You know, I, I can't really explain it now until we start doing some exercises that have more results. And, you know, you meant to have this and something else happened. You're printing out quiz results or something and it's not giving you the right percentage or whatever. That's why they say forgetting to divide by 100. And you want a percentage amount and it's getting it a 9% and it should be a 90% or something like that. So if you check here and that's the computer's not going to find that. The interpreter's not going to find that error because that's on you. So semantic errors are on you, and that's for you to track down, too. That's why they say here, who or what typically finds semantic errors? Uh, you. You have to find them out because you're not getting a result that you think. You know, that's why you might, that also requires some detective work to try out different things. Because sometimes that could be hidden because one thing will work and you'll think, oh, it's working. And then somebody else types something in and it's like, oh, now it's not working. What's going on here? Those are some things we have to work through a little bit too. So all that kind of troubleshooting and debugging kind of stuff we'll work through. And it should be fun. It should be part of the process of problem solving, troubleshooting. It'll help us. It'll help our brains. It'll help us make things more efficient when we work through things. Just keep in mind that errors are part of the process. And they're a good part of the process. I mean, not a lot. If you're making a lot of syntax errors, you should look at the language a little bit more and do a little bit more reading and stuff like that. And maybe just do more coding. The more coding you do, the more comfortable you're going to be and you're going to make less errors. So if you're not doing it a lot and you forget things, that's when it happens. So anyway, that's errors. That's a little intro to errors. It's going to happen all the time. It's a good thing. And just be aware of those types of errors. The three they mention in here are syntax errors, runtime errors, or exceptions, and the semantic errors. So we'll talk about them as we make errors because we're going to make errors. And when I record videos, I'll make errors too and I'll point them out. So anyway, just wanted to show that as part of your reading. I'll talk to you soon.